All right, what's going on, Fishaholics? Welcome back to another video. It's about 9 a.m. We're in Stewart, Florida right now. Just dropped the yak at the ramp in the water. And I would say we've been down in Florida for about a month now fishing mainly the Stewart, Port St. Lucie, and Fort Pierce area. But uh, we're gonna get back on the move after today or tomorrow and actually head south before we head north. Yes, we're going back north because of uh, family, Montauk, and striped bass. But check this out. Somehow, someone switched my plates. I <laughs> No, I did it. I got Florida plates now. And look at this, I have a 2019 Forerunner, which is my dream vehicle. And I'm still blown away how it even happened, how I got this vehicle, and it's a long story, so stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll kind of explain what happened with the RAV4 and why I'm now driving a 4Runner. But for now, let's uh, focus on getting out there, catching some fish. I think we're gonna primarily be after some snook, but of course be willing to catch whatever's willing to bite. So uh, let's load up the yak and get out there, go catch some fish. Thirty inch snook, that's what we're after. So we've got the end of the flood tide right now, and we're gonna first head to that bridge and fish like the end of the flood, fish the beginning of the ebb, and see what we can catch. If we catch some fish, then we might fish there a little longer. If we catch nothing, we'll maybe go uh, up river, fish some canals, and I don't know, we might just be out here for the afternoon if it's a really good bite and we catch plenty of fish, or we'll be out here uh, till dusk if uh, we're struggling and it's 10 o'clock right now by the time we got rigged and packed everything I think we need so let's go see what we can find probably gonna start off with uh, a shad finback shad before we fish though I'm just gonna go over here see what's up to my buddy Jake see what's going on We actually fished in here one night and I lost a couple decent snook on live mullet under the docks. Actually one right here. Yo, what's happening? <laughs> how's uh how's the night bite been around here? It's been pretty fun, good. Have you caught anything? There's literally always snook here. It's just a matter of like if they're eating. Yeah. But there's always snook. Yeah, have you caught any? Yeah. Nice. But all the good ones have been on live mullet. Yeah. Maybe we'll try that tonight again. 26, Here, you want to pack? It's probably not going to make it. No, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, take a pack and uh, maybe we'll fish them tonight. All right, so if you're wondering how fast I'm moving is six miles an hour, pedaling real hard like this. No current really here. All right, we got a nice bit of current still flooding in, and we actually have three bridges and a whole lot of structure to fish. This bridge is the older main Route 1 bridge, then we've got the rail bridge, then we got the newer Route 1 bridge. So a whole lot of structure to find some big snook lurking around. It'll either work to our advantage if there's a whole lot of fish that stack up around these bridges, or it'll work to our disadvantage because then we're gonna have to find that one spot that maybe has a good concentration of fish. You know, something my father always told me, uh, you know, any body of water, I would say, he said, is 10% has 90% of the fish. So if we consider around these three bridges 100%, we just had to find that 10% and uh, maybe we can catch some nice fish. All right, I'll start fishing around the front side of this structure where the current is washing by, and then we'll work our way to the back side and cover it all. The reverse drive is key when fishing these bridges like this. You can go against the current. Oh, I thought I had a fish there for a sec. It's bottom. It's about 14 feet here. We marked some fish like halfway down. It's kind of cool that guy's boat over there is aquaholic, fishaholic. There's a fish. Something decent, might be a jack. Yep. There we go. 
go, not bad. On the fin back. What's up, buddy? Grunt, 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 grunt. Oh, that's the cast. Off the wall and in the water, sinking right down. Now we're in the bottom. If you ever get in the bottom, never pull on it real hard. Just kind of lightly jiggle it. The weight of the jig head could sometimes sink it and back it out of the snag. And if that doesn't work, then you just get around the backside and pull it free. There he is. Ah, it's a ladyfish. Whoa! Ah, bluefish. Let's see how the shad held up. Hey, well, he didn't cut all the way through it. Still usable. That's good, yeah. Swimming nice. All right, I'm gonna make a move. Let's race this boat here. I'm gonna race you. <laughs> A lot of marks under the rail bridge. Fish on. Oh gosh, that's a snook. That's a snook. On the drop too. Oh, I lost them. Damn, man. That was a good fish. Awesome, thank you. I'll just, I gotta put it on my legs. That's all really I gotta do. All right, as soon as you get it, you can have this, it's when you're done, I'm leaving. So you can have this awesome. Spot. Yeah, I was gonna go try uh, the, the Roosevelt Bridge uh, pretty soon. I guess the tide's gonna start going out, I guess. It's, it's almost slack, really. All right, thanks again to Keith, Aquaholic. Huge shout out for lending me some sunscreen. I forgot in the car, like I always do. But if you're a northern guy or got that Irish skin, you fish in Florida in the kayak fully exposed, you need sunscreen. Luckily, we have some cloud cover today, so I'm not getting too crispy. But uh, I'd say we got about another like 20 minutes left of the incoming. It's really slowing down right now quite a bit. And uh, we'll go keep going for snook, then we'll switch over to bottom fish for the slack tide, and then switch back to snook once the tide starts running out. All right, we got slack water now, so I'm gonna try throwing on this juicy little soft plastic crab. Never used it before, never caught anything on it before, but uh, maybe today is the day. I just want to try it. It looks pretty juicy. Maybe a black drum will eat it. Got a little bit of outgoing current already. We're hiding out under the bridge because it's raining now. All right, well, it's been about an hour and a half. No bottom fish or any kind of structural fish, but we did find something else along the bridge. That's a nice jig. We'll take that. Oh, this is a juicy looking jig. Check this out. Oh yeah, look at that. That is the juice right there. Whoo! Looks like it was brand new and unfortunately an angler uh, got stuck on the piling. I got some more excess fishing line here too. I'll cut it down as far as I can. All right, well, I think it's gonna rain. <laughs> we picked a good day to fish the bridges and this wind is whew, it's whipping now. It's like at least blowing 20 to 30, me gusting to 30. It's like a completely different body of water now. And uh, I talked to that guy, Aquaholic. He said he caught like four or five snook, black drum, like a look down fish, and some jacks. But they were using live shrimp, which of course we don't have. We're using the artificials. But uh, I've been throwing around the fin back shads, Kitex, uh, DOAs, little crabs, Yozuris, Rapalas. 
and not a whole lot going on on this tide. I don't know why, but maybe with this storm coming through and after it passes, maybe it'll get some fish feeding a little bit. We uh, did wait out a little bit of rain, but it looks like we got more rain coming. So let's uh, see what we can do. Coming down hard now. Woo. We gotta hide on the side of this piling, get out of the wind. We made it through that very intense storm and I have to admit it was actually uh, kind of cool like witnessing it and being there uh, especially in the kayak and uh, now it's actually kind of nice it's like real glassy no wind and we fished for probably like another hour and a half two hours after the storm passed but uh, couldn't catch anything but uh, all in all a uh, decent outing uh, this is my first time really fishing around that area in the kayak and we caught some fish on the ebb and then you know found a couple decent jigs so uh you know it was an interesting day and then that, you know top it off with that sweet storm <laughs> then you know it was definitely uh a day that i'll remember oh. all right guys i think that is about a wrap we gotta load up the yak load up the gear in the new forerunner and uh, here's kind of how I even ended up with this vehicle because uh, most of you guys knew that I had that 2016 RAV4 which uh, I kind of got duped on when I got the vehicle about a year ago because it was like my first newish vehicle that I got on my own and uh, I paid about 15-16k for it but it had like 100,000 miles on it which <laughs> probably wasn't the best purchase or I probably could have made it a better purchase. Like I didn't really know how to work the deal because it was my first newish car. So uh, the town Toyota in Ledgewood, New Jersey, they got me and uh, I ended up paying way more for that vehicle than I obviously should have. And I think I had about 11K left on my loans. And then when I went down to the dealership down here in Florida just to get an oil change and get the brakes checked, I of course started looking around the lot and I wasn't really shopping or looking to, for a vehicle but I started test driving a vehicle and they wanted to try and get vehicles off the lot and they give you that whole, you know. And uh, eventually they uh, very aggressively pushed a deal on me where they would pay off what I owed on the RAV and then I would put a little bit down and I leased this 2019 Forerunner. And it's also crazy now I have Florida plates. Like I had no intention or any idea that this was gonna happen. I have this car leased for like 36 months. And then after that, I can decide whether or not I wanna buy it or trade it in or uh, lease another vehicle. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, check out the Fishaholic merch. And moving forward, for the rest of the month, we're gonna try and work our way a little bit further south and maybe make it to the Florida Keys. I'm gonna try and put that plan together over the next few days and see if we can make it happen. And I'm down here a lot longer than I thought I was gonna be. I thought I was gonna be heading back to Jersey like early April, which it is now, but we're actually not gonna be heading back north until probably like the 25th of April to like the 29th. And the reason for that is because my sisters and I are flying my mother down for her 60th birthday. So we're gonna be down here for a week celebrating and uh, you know, she, my mother has taken care of all of us really well so we just wanna treat her. So anyway, thanks for watching and like always, never forget, live to fish, fish to live, and I'll see you guys in the next one.